Well, good evening, folks. It's the real Captain Kirk here. It's 7 January 2023. We're live from one Bethlehem Plaza here in downtown Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Uh, we just sent out a, a video to uh, on the 2023 season here uh, to one of our favorite group of clients. Again, we have a lot of big Fortune 500 clients, but a group we like a lot is our farmers. We have hundreds of false small farmers across the U.S. and parts of the world. And again, so we gave them our 2023 Ag Outlook in a video Friday. So again, farmers, check your emails for that uh, last week, Friday morning. Uh, one of the big things we talked about, obviously, that's impacting the world is this uh, three-year La Nina event. If not a fan of analogs, but again, if we just line up recent years, uh, 1911 was the end of one three-year La Nina, 1918, 1951, 1976, and 2001. So those colored lines are just those years, again, in the past history. So haven't been a bunch of them. Uh, but what we see is that in year four, they've all trended toward uh, El Nino type situation here. So definitely a collapse of the La Nina. And we can show you how we see that, um, uh, you know, in some of the data here. Models will also, again, I'm not a fan of models, but uh, these models here, um, again, from NOAA show that uh, obviously we're heading toward an El Nino event um, into the summer of 2023. IRI has some of their model sets, again, also showing transitioning to El Nino in uh, summer of 2023. If you were just to look at the water temperatures versus average across the, the world, you may miss what's happening uh, here in the transition phase. So uh, it doesn't really show anything dramatic. And we still see the La Nina colder than water, normal water temperatures in the equatorial Pacific. But if we look at these maps a little differently on Weather Trends 360's website, you can see the change versus last year. And that starts to show a telltale sign of see the much, much colder waters developing in the eastern Indian Ocean, and we see warmer waters uh, developing in the eastern Pacific, showing a sign of this collapse of this La Nina. We can also look at NOAA's product that looks at the buoys. Uh, this is showing you an equatorial cross-section below the surface. So this is um, you know, 150 to 200 meters below the surface of the Pacific Ocean near the equator from Malaysia, Australia, all the way to Ecuador. And what you see here is that uh, way below normal temperatures just a month ago in November, uh, in the eastern Pacific. So we'll start this right here. So we have way below normal temperatures below the surface in the eastern Pacific. And now look what's happening. Those are disappearing. We're seeing pockets of above normal temperatures emerging in the eastern Pacific. So as this bubbles to the surface, again, this will be a already, we can see signs of the pattern changing. So this is a, almost a certainty here that uh, El Nino is in the cards here for 2023 by summertime and certainly for 2024. It's very important because it's just one of many cycles that we look at, but um, it is a critical one because it tells you what's going on globally. Again, under La Nina, we tend to have substance sinking air in these uh, headlights-like sail circulation uh, around the world. Uh, so U.S. would have sinking air, Brazil sinking air. That's why we've had three years of drought-type conditions for a lot of the country, not everywhere, but most of the U.S. China, on the other hand, Asia, Malaysia, and Australia would tend to have rising air and a lot of moisture. And they've had several good crop years in China and lots of ample rainfall. This pattern flip-flops completely. So you bring that moisture, you see it's already starting in California here. So I, it may be a little early here, but uh, again, no doubt the U.S. will have a, a wetter pattern for sure. We're seeing the wettest spring summer in four years in the U.S. Uh, and for Brazil, whereas China, Australia have some sinking air. So again, just a wholesale change in the pattern coming up here for 2023 and 2024. We're already seeing that obviously with the epic rains in California that uh, now leading to flooding and it'll completely wipe out their drought. We'll start here with the last week's summer here of... Um, the U.S. and the world here, again, week ending tonight. Here in the U.S., we're about 11.6 degrees warmer than last year, warmest in 15 years, second warmest in 38 years, so a hot week for sure. Uh, rainfall off about 35%, 34%, most in six years, so a wet week. Snowfall continues to be way down again, 50% less than a year ago, 10th um, least in 38 years. Uh, maps, bottom left there, are the trends versus average. Uh, other hot spots were up in Canada, 17.4 degrees warmer than a year ago, so uh, UK, warmest in 10 years. Um, Europe, warmest in 16 years. Cold spots continue to be uh, down under in uh, Australia, India, and Brazil. Again, southern parts of the southern hemisphere obviously still trending cold. Season date snowfall has now begun to trend below average. Uh, so we're still 31% above last year from September to current date. Uh, most in three years, but 6% below average, 15th least in 38 years. So this warmer trend starting to put a, a dent in the extreme uh, snow that we'd seen uh, in the west. Part of the problem here is the polar vortex problem, or good news, is the, the strength of this polar vortex. It's symmetrical and generally um, strong. What that means is it just keeps the cold air bottled up in the Arctic regions. Actually, in this case, it's bottled up pretty much in Siberia, Russia, where it belongs. Um, so keeping the U.S., Europe, and Asia on the warmer side, again, and that's the 14-day forecast. So it doesn't, some minimal weakening, maybe, but um, not much. If we look at this week, week ending 14 January here, again, same general trend here. So we're about 5.7 warmer than last year. Warmest in 17 years for this, uh, again, second full week of January. 
third warmest in 38 years, so almost wall-to-wall above average temperatures uh, across the U.S. Cold spots would be there in the mountains of California and maybe some little pockets in the high elevations of the Rockies. Precip on the uptick here. Again, we have about um, 72% wetter than last year. What is in three years? So again, this is, again, a sign of the pattern starting to shift here. Uh, we think it for sure will shift as we get into the spring summer time frame here in the u.s uh, snowfall about nine percent less than a year ago uh, at least in 13 years if we look at the six-day snowfall i'll look here again it looks like a lot in the west than it is certainly in the sierras that continue to get pounded in california uh, so 19 percent more than last year but 81 percent below average second least in 38 years so not much models are hinting at something just beyond this period in the in the northeast uh, where we've not had hardly any snow here in the Coastal Northeast, um, certainly Buffalo's had some, but the Northeast overall, not much. And again, the six-day trend here shows, uh, again, about 81% below average, so not much, second least in 38 years. Next week, again, same general theme, uh, maybe not quite as warm in the West, but again, overall, here in the U.S., 11.7 warmer than last year, number one warmest in 38 years. So again, very warm conditions here for, for mid-January. This is good for... Uh, construction and outdoor activities and store traffic and going to restaurants again generally uh, saving on your electric bill after december this will be a huge plus because the december bill will be pretty shocking um, this bill will be a little bit less um, maps bottom left there are the temps versus last year and precip versus average and if we just aggregate these world two-week outlooks again 18 through 21 january we can see where that polar vortex is and it's pretty much clamped out over russia moscow southeast uh, southwest but russia and siberia let's hope it stays there it uh, may wobble a bit and that would be a we'll see where it heads uh, after this but at least for the next two weeks it's stuck there so have a great week folks we will talk to you uh, this time next week